Welcome back to the Productioner Dude. Today, we are continuing Chemically Bonded once again. So last time we left off, Kyoko revealed her side of the past, which, you know, of course ended up being more or less the same as Naomi's story. But then she expressed how much she felt, so... I think from here on out, we now have a plan to hopefully get Kyoko and Naomi to talk to each other. So, we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> so, this is where we left off last time. Morning sunlight seeping through the windows. The class settles down into a state of silence as the usual study session begins. A usual atmosphere, rife with conversation, gossip, and giggles now tranquil as we focus on the work before us. Well, most people. Having spent the day yesterday with Kyoko, I can't help but think more about the relationship between the two of them. The world I'd happened to uncover all from opening one small door. It's a situation I couldn't have, couldn't have uh, expected myself to be in. Both of these girls are now a part of my life. They're my friends. I want them to be friends again too. N not to me. I forgot my lunch money. <laughs> what? Again? <laughs> it, it's not my fault. Walking through the convoluted room, classmates uh, sprawling in and out of the room during lunch break. I approach Kyoko's desk as usual to find herself focused intently on something in her hands. Uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix it. Peering down towards the item, all I can see is a small plastic pipette embraced between her small, pale fingers. You're not going to fix that. I can. The pipette, clearly bent out of shape, remains dented and twisted no matter how hard Kyoko tugs and presses on it. What if I try biting it? Huh? <laughs> That's not going to work. I don't think that ever works. <laughs> eh, whatever. I'll just get another one from the club room. I'll have to see you later. There's work to do. Uh, that or she just wants more time to try out the new goodies she bought yesterday. <laughs> Knowing all too well, I'd favor eating over experiments. Alright, do you want me to bring you back anything? It, it's fine. Not even an orange juice? <laughs> I brought my own. Raising her hands in her usual happy manner, Kyoko smiles widely, shouting out her words energetically. Enough so to get us a few looks. Still, a singer like this is really sweet, or really is sweet, anyway. Her cute puffy cheeks gracing her silky brown hair as she takes a moment to finally tie it back in her trademark style. I'll see you later. I'll see you too. Leaving Kyoko to her business, she treats me to one last glimpse of her cute, captivating smile before I head out into the corridor. The sounds of students still present remain muffled behind the walls as I make my way down the now empty in corridors. It's no surprise to be late to lunch, but it's not as if I really mind. What with Naomi being one to prowl the in school during lunch breaks. Maybe I can actually find her and tell her what I've learned from Kyoko. It's either that or the desire to speak to her itself pushing me further towards the cafeteria. Are we going to be seeing Naomi here basically? That's what I want to know. As usual, the cafeteria is full of life as the people around gather at tables to eat and talk. There are daily routines. The stragglers like myself <laughs> left to fend for the remaining food they can get as the noise within the room increases to that of typical school levels. The now afternoon sun, now beating through the windows, leaves me famished for a drink as I stroll leisurely towards the vending machines. To be honest, I need something to refresh myself after dealing with all the commotion this past week. Hi, how are you? Where do you think you are going? Oh, hello again, Naomi. <laughs> uh, stopping me in my path, I almost choke as Naomi speaks up, grabbing me by the car as she does so. <laughs> Her skin, briefly skirting across the back of my neck, is still as soft as I expected to be. <laughs> Considering this was the girl who had a problem even looking at me, she seems awfully comfortable confronting me with most of the school as her audience. I'm going to get a drink! Here. Thrusting a bottle into my hands, the chill of the drink and the warmth of her hands mix to create a unique sensation at my fingertips. What the fuck? Her face, showing what's now a commonly embarrassed expression, is shyly shifted away from my own as she continues to speak up. D come with me. Please. Naomi, now tugging on my sleeve, looks up with a shyly woeful expression. A look coating her face that I'd rather not see in contrast to her usual beauty. Even if I do face her wrath, her usual insults and jabs, I can't deny that she is rather attractive. She didn't top both the guys and the girls list for no reason. Walking along with her, my eyes catch the heads of various people in the room tilt towards us. Sure, it's not that many, but our presence doesn't go unheeded in the room. A true reflection of Naomi's popularity. Despite spending so much time with her, 
uh, despite getting so close to her, I can't see her as the person I thought she was anymore. Someone who was unreachable by the likes of me, a superstar, the popular girl. I'd always thought she could get any guy she wanted, and she can. <laughs> but it's not as if she wanted to. Walking out into the corridor, Naomi once again speaks up, a voice I'm used to and rather fond of hearing. We should probably go somewhere quiet. I want to talk. Uh, about what? Come on. It's not as if you don't know by now. I want to talk about Kyoko. Yep. I did, but it's always good to ask. Continuing on past the array of classrooms, my weary eyes watch out through the glass trying to spot out the very girl in both our minds. It's evident she'd find out eventually. She'd find out all about the type of relationship I've had with Naomi, that we've become friends. As the afternoon light pierces through the tiny slithers of window along the corridor, Naomi's grip slides down my sleeve and towards the embrace of my hand. A nervous feeling. She's shaking. The warmth she's held inside her, shaking about in my palm, grows ever closer as all she does is continue to tighten her already fierce, lonely grip. Th this way. Trailing around the school, we find ourselves bursting through the main doors into the fresh air outside. The world fading into silence as the sound of students grow ever so muffled in the building behind us. The warmth of the sun complements Naomi's own, as both of us are graced by a passing spring breeze. Her hair swaying softly in the wind shines in the sunlight as she stands with her back towards my eyes. Are you sure we're even allowed out here? The question flies past her, giving a set of blank response as she continues to stare off into the distance. I guess now isn't the time for our usual back and forth routine. This is the real Naomi. You want to talk about her, right? She, she's not saying anything? Oh. No. I just wanted to ask how your day was. Of course it's about her. During the face, Naomi's eyes are filled with a sadness seldomly seen from her. Yet one I've come to know. Her lips remain firm, locked into a sorrow-filled frown as they glisten in the lights, matching the teardrops hanging from her eyes. Taking a short breath, words once again start flowing from her heart. I just really want things to be normal again. I don't know what to do. It's kind of granted that our plan, our attempts to unravel Kyoko's heart and tie it with her own haven't been working out as well as we'd hoped. The feeling Kyoko holds are locked behind the thoughts of betrayal, regret, and sorrow that separated them in the first place. The belief she can't forgive her. But as long as those feelings are there, there's always a chance. Whoa, okay. So there's three choices. So we got, I can understand. Kyoko feels the same, or maybe you should try harder. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like the last one sounds kind of savage. It's like, hmm, maybe if you tried a little harder. Alright, um... I would say maybe Kyoko feels the same. I mean, it's... Because uh, I know Naomi, like... She wants to get back with Kyoko, but I don't know if... I'm not entirely sure if, like, Kyoko wants to get back with her in the same sense, but they at least kind of have the same feelings, like, you know, betrayal, regret, everything like that. Uh, I think I would just say I can understand, because I don't know, because I feel like I would be kind of lying if I just said Kyoko feels the same at this point, so I can understand. What makes you say that? Naomi's face fills with a mix of hope and confusion, tears still occasionally falling from her face as she wipes at her eyes with her sleeve. With her blazer being battled, or, oh, with be being batted about by the breeze, she really does look beautiful, even if it's a beauty filled with sadness. I have been talking to her. Wasn't that the reason you asked for my help? It's not as if I didn't want to. I want to see you happy. But... Kyoko... Her voice now filling further with despair, Naomi averts her eyes away as if to hide her emotions from my sight. An act of reservation from a girl usually dominating the world around her. Naomi this whole time has... has just been that fragile? Has been just as fragile, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm supposed to say. The heart inside her, broken, has only just begun to bleed with true emotion. Kyoko was just upset at the time, wouldn't you be? It would have been hard to forgive you, having been thrust into loneliness. You were there for her, but do you think she could see that? Would it have been really clear for her, or would it really have been clear for her? She just needs time to see the truth. She needs to see you really matter to her. Naomi lifts her head only slightly from its sunken state. 
It's enough to see her crying. If you were truly friends before, I'm sure Kyoko would be more than willing to forgive you once she's had the time to gather her thoughts. You just need to keep trying. Now in full view, Naomi's tear-coated face catches the sunlight. Teardrops sparkling in the sun like diamonds. All that comes wait, all that comes from her are whimpers and ragged breasts as she finally opens her eyes. A deep ocean of azure glossed over with the shine of tears as she wipes them away. Teardrops soaked into her shirt and sleeves. You know what? You're right. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. I bet you had no idea that things ran this deep between us. D did you? Yeah, it's not as if I didn't want to help. Not just for Kyoko's sake, but more importantly, your own. I don't need you looking down on me. I'm not. We've, wait, I've been through this with you, haven't I? I just want to see you happy. <laughs> Thank you. With those words, Naomi continues to wipe away the sadness from her face, quickly gathering composure. Seeing her like this, it's captivating. Her heart being truly made clear as her feelings are released from their cage. She really is something. Uh, anyway, we should probably head back inside before people see us. Class will start soon. Are you still concerned about being seen together? <laughs> I thought by now she'd stop caring. I mean that the teachers will see us here. You idiots. So, I guess to answer that last question you had before, maybe they're not allowed to be... I'm assuming in the front of the school because you see the gate back there. <laughs> That's the only thing I can assume. For once, it actually took effort for an insult to get out. A sign of sweeter things. <laughs> With a smile, Naomi lets the feelings rooted in her heart known to the world. Yet, I'm the only one here to witness them. The sight, uh, picturesque as Naomi's hair, is gracefully ruffled. Or gracefully... Can't even read this. Um, the sight, picturesque as Naomi's hair, is gracefully roughed against the wind. Her body lit by the afternoon sunlight. Come on. I'll treat you to something after school. Like what? <laughs> J just a few snacks or something. Jeez. <laughs> Even then, snacks with Naomi would have been a pipe dream not so long ago. Uh, closing the gap between us, Naomi briefly takes me in her embrace as she whispers into my ear. Her warmth, her scent, ever so close. Thank you. I really mean it. <laughs> Letting go, her warmth fleets into the surrounding air as I brush my hand against my ear. Naomi letting out a small giggle, skipping ahead of me with the world as her backdrop. <laughs> All this time, having her as a friend, it's been great. It's something I can be happy about. The feelings inside me now nestling, knowing that all we can do is know to look towards the future. If we weren't, she wouldn't have let her see me cry. The only other person I can think she would is Kyoko. However, as the story between the three of us develop, the fire within my heart won't subside. The embers of a life once filled with dissatisfaction, confusion, and angst now alight with newfound passions. My life. Being around these two really isn't healthy. But I like it. <laughs> Alright. As the sun continues seeping through the windows, a tranquil look of calmness fills the room as specks of dust sparkle in the air. The shadows of passing students slicing through the light as I too join them in raising from my seat. Looking towards Gyoko still sitting at the front of the room, the thought of breaking away from the club to meet with Naomi springs to mind. I hadn't considered it earlier, but Naomi has never been the one to understand my obligation to meet Kyoko. Moving my feet in rhythm, I make my way towards Kyoko's desk before stopping with a moment's hesitation. She looks low. Having just dealt with one outburst from Naomi, having a day filled with sorrow really wouldn't be invigorating. Uh, are you okay? No. It's all over. What? They kicked me out of the lab. I'm not allowed back in till tomorrow. Why is that? I... Alright. Go on. Hesitating briefly, Kyoko's face becomes increasingly flustered as she looks down towards her desk. Such a tranquil sight, quickly springing back um, to that of Kyoko's energetic self. Drop the flask, okay? There. Cheers! <laughs> No, hole on the floor. It had acid in. <laughs> and you didn't get expelled for that. Why? Because they called me a good girl. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep getting good grades. Well, I guess you can't argue with that logic. <laughs> like they said before, 
she must be single-handedly putting this school on the radar for good grades, you know. <laughs> oh, right. Where would we be without her? Seeing how good her grades really are, first-hand would be something to witness. What with midterms right around the corner? Hey. Sorry, what? I guess I zoned out. I said... I'll have to cancel the club for today. There's not much we can do together here. Fuck! Uh, it's a shame, but given I was bound to be leaving anyway to meet with Naomi, I guess I can call it convenient too. Yoko's face still carries a look of dejection as she rubs her temples gently, mulling over whatever thoughts are floating in her head. She too, just like Naomi, carries the same traces of happiness and sorrow sprinkled throughout her daily life. I'll just have to keep building up my excitement for tomorrow's club meeting then. You're excited? Me too. <laughs> Alright, finishing your sentence with a smile, uh, Kyoko leaps up from her chair enthusiastically. Men get into the desk behind her. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyway, we should probably get going. In a bear's look on her face, Kyoko peers towards me meekly as she plays with her hair gently. I suppose she had it tied up earlier. <laughs> you can go on without me. I need to stay behind. Restroom break. <laughs> but thanks for telling me. <laughs> but, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Wearing a mask of contem contemplation, uh, Kyoko looks briefly away before fixing her gaze back towards me with a smile. It's cute seeing her like this, being able to take her in. Okay, I'll see you then. Straining out of the room together, the trail end of the adjacent classes, uh, wait, filing out of each room greets us. A scattering of students lingering about in the corridors, heading off in all sorts of directions. Home, club activities, even a few delinquents hanging around by the lockers. It's a usual sight for sure, but my awareness of their presence quickly diminishes as I take one last look at Kyoko. Her lips curled into a final smile as she waves goodbye, her silky hair flowing down her back as she turns away. With one girl now leaving for the day, the thoughts of the other creep back into my mind as I make my own way down the corridor towards the stairs. Naomi. Oh, knowing her, she's probably waiting for me at the gym. That or the cafeteria. With each step I take, my heart beats in its own rhythm as I keep dwelling on the thoughts of her. Having, having had an interesting relationship with her so far, it's weird to think that I'm actually looking forward to seeing her. For once, the thought of being insulted or berated over existing <laughs> are tucked beneath the covers of a newfound feeling in my heart. The feeling of wanting to see her smile. The feeling of being with her. Alright, so I guess we're in the gym first. Standing within the midst of the gym hall, a quick scan of the room shows no signs of Naomi. In fairness, finding her would be like looking for a needle in a haystack, given a place like this. Activity surrounds me as, as the uh, members of various sports clubs fill the hall. The shouts and cheers ringing from the athletics team to the gymnasts. Even the basketball team preparing for a training match. Hello, it sure is busy in here, huh? Oh god, okay, that's here real well. Um, yes it is. Aren't you supposed to say, yes who, before covering someone's eyes? Yeah, but I figured you'd know it's me anyway. It's a different surprise, which I don't want you seeing. Sup, bitches. The feeling of her warm hands against my face now pleaded. The sight of the world returns to me as Naomi steps out in front. An oddly warm smile coating her face. It's a nice sight. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Thrusting out a small box before her, I looked down to see an assortment of food through the pink-tinted plastic as the light from above shines down upon it. A small, delicately crafted lunchbox within her hands. You made that? For being disgusted by my presence and threatened me in all sorts of ways. This certain- Oh, this certainly is striking a change. D do I really have to say it? Y yeah I did. <laughs> Thanks. It's not for you. <laughs> We're going to share it. Hey, you're better. <laughs> right, I don't know. Um, giving an embarrassing look, or embarrassed look, Naomi spins around giving me a better look at her back. Having tied her hair up, the usual spray of a burn is nowhere to be seen in her twirl, but as she walks further ahead, I can't help but move my eyes downward. The spats aren't compulsory. <laughs> what are you doing? Come on! Peering back towards me, Naomi continues again walking towards the bleachers as I quickly catch up um, to beside her. <laughs> sure. A newfound character <laughs> in a girl whose life was once filled with a deep regret. I, wait, there's a lot of grammar mistakes here. I guess now she's realized what she must do. She can begin to overcome her past mistakes. 
she can start being happy again. That is if Kyoko truly accepts her feelings of guilt. Sitting beside her on the bleachers, Naomi shows no sign of discomfort as she begins opening the box and prepares two sets of chopsticks. In all honesty, this feels like some kind of date. I'm surprised she isn't on the offensive with this one. Where'd you get the idea of sharing lunch with me? Earlier. After you talked to me. So where'd you find the time to make it? You thought I bought it from the store, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, considering it's the same day, probably. I'll be honest. No, but... What an ass. <laughs> I went home to make it if you really wanted to know. Wait, you skipped class? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> She's already become a rebel. <laughs> now in the midst of eating a small sausage carved into the shape of an octopus. I can't see how the situation can get any more cliched beyond the point of recognition. <laughs> Having gotten used to Naomi's spicy attitude, seeing her eat lunch so complacently offers a new insight into who she truly is. Want some? Sure, but this really is uncharacteristic of you. Naomi swallowing down her food quickly takes a brief moment to bat her eyes away as she lights up with red coating her cheeks. Silence falls upon us before she continues speaking out once again. What's your impression of me? Really? Seeing her face sunk into a state of embarrassment, I can't help but think of this as an opportunity to confess what feelings about her really are. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> so everything is literally just... You're a sundere, <laughs> but in like different statements, you see. Because you see, uh, first one, a sundere. You are such a sundere. Ever heard of the term sundere? Or sun plus dere equals sundere equals you. <laughs> okay, I like this. Um, I'm just gonna say, ever heard of the term sundere? <laughs> I really like what they did here. Yeah, you ever heard of that term? You just seem bold. I didn't think we'd ever be so close to eat lunch together. I try my best. <laughs> Responding with a shrug, Naomi continues to tuck into her homemade meal as I join her, taking a second pair of chopsticks between my fingers. I'd never figured I'd get the chance to eat the cooking of the school's idol, but here I am. This is good. It's delicious. But thanks. I mean, of course it is. <laughs> I made it for you. Seeing her cute, flustered face ignites a feeling of embarrassment in my own. My heart now beating like the drums of a marching band, leading me down a path of not only confusion, but wonder of our future together. It's certain to say we're not friends. I don't see her disappearing after she grunts Kyoko with her feelings, no matter how much their time unfolds. Even that coming from you, the school's dream girl, certainly is weird. Really? I wouldn't think of myself like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, most guys would kill to eat your homemade food. <laughs> Enough so that I can't help but be suspicious of the glares coming from a few people around the hall. Perhaps you shouldn't complain then. After all, I chose to become friends with you. Uh, as long as you keep giving me food, I think it'll stay that way. Damn. <laughs> Alright, uh, it really is good, surprisingly. I'm glad you like it. I spat in it after all. Hey yo, what the fuck? You don't got some kind of, like, virus, do you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Now choking on my food, Naomi slaps my back in earnest as the rice I was just eating forces its way back up my throat. I was joking, you idiot. <laughs> do you really think I'd do that? I would have laughed if she really said that. Or if she really did, too. It's gonna be like, what kind of virus do you have? <laughs> what sort of weirdo do you think I am? <laughs> Not a weirdo, but someone who's held an intense dislike for me in the past. <laughs> one, oh, one that hangs around other weirdos, like me. <laughs> You're not a weirdo. She seems to have gone back on days worth of insults, yet hearing that without a sarcastic inflection eases my heart. As we continue to eat together, the food in Naomi's small cute container quickly diminishes as our once active conversation drifts into nothing more than silence. Both of us embraced by each other's presence. Such a scene would have been unimaginable only a week ago, sitting here in the midst of the gym, eating lunch with THE Naomi Sato. A girl with such a high status around the school, now sitting beside me as someone I can only think of as a regular girl. However, I know such a regularly um, is so far from the truth of who Naomi really is. The question itself about her true feelings still leaves me scratching my head. Finishing up the food before us, Naomi looks at me with a smile as she still uh, keeps her chopsticks pressed between her lips. Hmm? Nothing, I was just wondering if it was okay for me to distract you from club activities. You're supposed to be the captain, aren't you? That isn't nothing, then. 
But look around you. Taking my eyes away from her, a glance around the hall shows no signs of the bustling activity which once surrounded us. Everyone's gone home. We've been here that long? <laughs> it's not like I mind. Time itself having flown by, Naomi remains complacent as she stares back towards me, with a shade of red coated across her puffed cheeks. Uh, seeing such cuteness shining out from her feels an indescribable feeling within my heart. It's a picturesque uh, scene in what has been a saga of events for the two of us. Well, we should probably set off too. Thanks for the food. I can't help but stutter. I've never had a girl make food for me like this. It's an even weirder experience having her make it. Th thanks for eating it. I used to eat lunch like this with Kyoko. Now looking passively towards the floor, those same feelings of dejection pass over her as she fidgets with her fingers. A girl I had once thought of as a bull, now timidly trapped in the web of her own emotions. Uh, did you ever make lunch for her like this? What? No! I wasn't her maid! <laughs> that was a thank you. To you. You've done a lot for me. I can't give that back. But, I have to be the one to try harder to convince Kyoko. I want to make things right. Um, all this time, the passion of flame in Naomi's heart had only served to scold her. Kyoko's own rejections of Naomi's pleas of apology, having been separated for so long. Um, those bottled up feelings now beginning to leak out from her heart. It's no doubt that moving forward is the only option for her. For us. Kyoko too, in conflict with her past, still holds their time together close. The wounds which time has inflicted now beginning to heal, as both begin to recognize how deep their bonds really are. I'm happy for you. Responding softly with a smile, Naomi moves ahead of me towards the doors of the hall, spinning around before speaking softly once again. Thank you. This really is her true self, the thing that I've been looking for all this time. This is the real Naomi I wanted to see. Ooh. I don't know if, uh, okay. Wait, so staring at the screen as the phone continues to ring, the absence of any recognizable name is more than enough to pique my wavering interest. Besides Naomi and Kyoko, I can't imagine anyone else who'd call me at this hour. One swift tap on the screen is all that it'll take to find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I would have a choice. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Anyway. Hello? Hello, is this the Pizza Palace? Who? Oh! Yo, who? Who the hell is this? P pizza Palace? What kind of name is that? Wait, is this who I think it is? Okay, it's either Chidose or Natsumi. I can't remember, like, I don't remember their distinct voices <laughs> apart, but yeah, I know, I think it's one of them. Chidose from class. There you go. Ah, I didn't know you worked at Pizza Palace. <laughs> I don't. You're on my cell. Frankly, I'd argue the term cell phone is becoming dated, yet right now, I can hardly consider it a major concern. On the other end of the line is one of my classmates who I fondly recall calling me a loser. Eh, I must have typed it in wrong. Anyway, I haven't got time for this. Have fun with Kyoko. Wait. Kyoko remains on the line, now permeating with a brief moment of silence. What's your problem with her? Ever since her scathing attacks against me, I couldn't help but think about Kyoko's own relationship with her uh, classmates. Having seen the extent of which the rumors surrounding her have gone, it's something I can't stop myself from asking. I d don't have one! Stop the cow! It's just... you've heard the rumors, right? How could someone like her show up the rest of the team by cheating? Someone like her doesn't deserve to be by na- now, <laughs> Naomi, I can't consider that surprising. Given her popularity, it's not re unreasonable that such speculation surrounding the relationship has ignited the flames of gossip ever since that race. If people truly think Kyoko cheated, Naomi's diehard fans surely must have something to say about it. Chidose must be one of them. It's nothing. Just, I'll see you in class tomorrow. Probably. Following the silence once again, our calls end with nothing but confusion lingering within the test of my mind. Our day is brought to an end. Oh, our day is brought to an official end with a few departing words from the teacher. I want you all to finish this by next week. A procrastinating populace damages the country, you know. In retrospect, I should probably submit a formal apology to the local prefectural office for all the harm I've caused. <laughs> Finishing a sentence with his own sigh of relief, the class bursts out into a chorus of conversations and gossip reemerge out from the hearts of my classmates. 
Words and thoughts inhibited by the school routine, now out in the wild once more. Ending my day with the warmth of the sun caressing my cheeks as I ponder how to approach the small brunette bundle of energy sitting at the front of the room. A girl known as Kyoko Ishikawa. Hey, what are you doing tonight? There's a new show on. I really want to watch it. You sure? You know we have midterms soon, right? Uh, what's the point? We all know who's going to top them. <laughs> what is this, a competition? <laughs> Listening to the passing gossip as I make my way towards Gilgo's chair, I can't help but agree with the voices passing through the quarter sounds of the room. Yet I can't help but feel she'd be disappointed if I didn't put some effort in either. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Why do you care? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but you're supposed to study. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> the whole like thing around her. She's like, hey, how dare you say? Um, why do I care? <laughs> All right, um, or at least something like that. As people before me weave um out and around desks towards the door, I find myself skirting through my classmates to finally approach Kyoko's desk. At the end of the day, it's another trip to the science club. Despite things starting to come to a close, a sinking feeling tugs at the bottom of my heart. Dragging it further down into a sea of thought I can't escape from. Until Naomi decides to approach Kyoko, all I can do is ride this wave of tranquility and enjoy my time with her without involving myself in their relationship. Um, are you excited for the club? Uh, what? <laughs> Turning her head sharply to face me, a jolt of surprise rushes through Kyoko as she shakes back in her seat, eyes widened with fright. What's wrong? N nothing. <laughs> I was just about to ask you that. Th that's all. <laughs> You didn't even know I was here. Before I turned around, you could have been. It's a quantum superposition. Huh? A uh, what? You're either behind me or not until I check. <laughs> you, you know, you're right. I'm like a ninja. <laughs> I could be in front of you and then I teleport behind you. <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. All right. Uh, once again, a communications barrier between me and little Miss Einstein. Regardless, as she stands before me complacently with her rosy cheeks puffed out in a pout, I can know for sure that she's proud of herself. You're excited though, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Stepping out from her desk, Kyoko looks towards me with a grin plastered on her cute face. An, ador an adorable sight of friendship lighting up the room. At least metaphorically, given the time we spent together, I can't help but cherish the sight of her smile. A contrast to the woes she's been carrying all too long. I can only pray that things go well with Naomi. As she bats her hair behind her back, Stroking it gently as it frays out beautifully, like a chocolate fountain, she lifts her head up. Finally, we get to go home. I hate economics. <laughs> what happened to your basketball training? That? Oh, right. Well, <laughs> skipping a day can't hurt, can it? Listening to the intermittent, intermittent uh, chatter as I weave through the crowds with Kyoko, my mind returns to a state of thought as the girl to my side remains in her own silent trance. A girl captivated by the mysteries of the world, prodding them with her inquisitivity, looking out for results. For a scientist, she certainly prioritizes fun over actual knowledge. I'm not sure what she gets out of doing our experiments, besides the thrill of possibly burning the school down. <laughs> Such a thought makes me ponder where her profound energy was directed before she joined the club, before she was kicked off the track team, when she was with Naomi instead of me. The thought of her dark hair rustling from the speed of her sprinting down the track, adorned in traditional bloomers and shirt. <laughs> she doesn't seem like a spats type of girl. <laughs> Yet as much as she seems to want to cherish the time she spent with Naomi, taking the final steps to bring them together is no longer in my hands. Catching glimpses of Kyoko's cheerful expression, reflected from the glass panes skirted down the corridor, a calm feeling washes over me, a sense of solidarity. Despite the troubles in her school life, she skips cheerfully down the corridor with a smile adorned on her cute face. No real care in the world. Inside, she's hurt, yet somehow content with the life she's living. Happy she can rummage through her art to find some kind of fun in her daily life. Arriving at the labs, Gilgo turns towards me, her brunette lock of hair uh, gliding through the air as she now faces me. Happiness coating her face, her lips curled up into a smile as a rosy bloom caresses her cheeks. It's this image which has kept me here. We're here. I know that. <laughs> Do you need a hand setting stuff up today? With time itself continuing to pass, I have to at least engage myself in the club, club activities at some point. Yeah, I'd really like that. <laughs> we need the Bunsen burners and the measuring cylinders. I'll get the beakers. 
half-hazardly lifting her lab coat from a nearby chair and squeezing into it, Kyoko makes her way to a set of drawers at the far, the far end of the room, squatting down to find the beakers. Uh, despite it being a sight, I can't ignore the task handed down to me. Gripping the slender handles of a nearby cupboard, I scout out the rest of the equipment as Yoko hums diligently in the background. Living life like this, it's not all that bad. Or it's not at all bad. Mm, could you get some universal indicator? I'll handle the more serious stuff. Given her track record, ruining her clothes, and blasting the room with a blitz of smoke, you think I'd be the one trusted with the hazardous stuff? Yet as clumsy as she is, Kyoko's intellect far outmatches my own. I can't even tell the difference between a compound and a molecule. Sure. As time watches over us, I continue watch or continue onwards uh, watching Kyoko frantically scurry around the room as she continues setting up a makeshift experiment. Each time we come here, things continue to get more and more complex as she maintains the same upbeat smile on her face. Uh, lips curled up in joy as they glisten, and the ever-sinking sun as afternoon turns to evening. I think I need a break. I'm thirsty. What about the experiment? I can do that later. I really want some juice. <laughs> what happened to that drink for intellectuals you had before? <laughs> the school doesn't sell them. And I drink the rest. You know, honestly, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Just drink the rest of those sodas. <laughs> I love soda. Um, you sure that's good for you? Of course, but juice is even better. <laughs> you want some? I'm okay, thanks. But we could share some. I'll <laughs> think about it. <laughs> I'm starting to feel bad. <laughs> All right, anyway, so looking towards me with a wry smile, Goku walks back towards the door as she unsheathes herself from her lab coat. <laughs> Regardless of her wearing it, I can't help but find her cute. Her behavior channeling your inner well of eccentricity as she bursts out each sentence joyfully. From the outside, nobody would think she'd be carrying so much pain. Finishing off by running her fingers through her hair, Kyoko gestures towards the door as we make our way out into the corridor once again. A duo on a journey to quench our thirst, but it's not as if I'm particularly thirsty. Yet as Kyoko sways her arms by her sides as we stroll down the now empty halls, I can't appreciate or I can't help but appreciate that this reality has become routine. Pushing the doors to the cafeteria open, the two of us walk inside, greeted by a state of silence as the room remains as empty as the corridors. I guess at this time of day, what with people either in clubs or at home, we can actually cherish each other's company a little more than usual. Do you want a juice? I'll buy you one. Once again peering towards me with a beam, Kyoko's cheeks remain mildly flustered as she anticipates my response. Her faint breathing still no noticeable amidst the silence. Her mouth ajar as she tries to capture herself within her awkward state. I'm okay. If I'm thirsty, I'll just have a sip of yours. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Damn. That's good with me. But you're my friend. I want to buy you one. You've stuck with me. You haven't quit the club. That's more than I can ask for. <laughs> Damn, she is so sweet. Eyes now facing the floor, but a sad expression still visible on her delicate face. I can't help but feel bad for not accepting her offer. She clearly wants me to make some, or she clearly wants to make something up to me, despite not owing me a cent. If you insist, I'll have a soda. Not an orange juice? That's my favorite. <laughs> I'm not a kid. <laughs> Free school students can enjoy juice too. Exactly. With a pout, Kyoko lifts her arms to her chest in rejection of my stance. Eyes fixed towards my my own. With some kind of emotional dissonance as she continues to breathe heavily in anger. Maybe you can. You were pretty childlike after all. <laughs> Damn. Not. I'm a mature woman. <laughs> Moving my eyes down slowly, I can't really think of any part of her that could be called mature. Showing her back to me with uh, mock the test. Kyoko approaches the vending machine almost timidly as she looks around for our drinks. Slapping the button with enthusiasm, a small can is quickly grabbed by the machine and falls uh, down into the slot below, shortly followed by another. The prior discontent on her face is now gone as she turns back towards me with a grin, extending out my soda and favorous splash. Here. Thanks. <laughs> Turning her side towards me, Kyoko looks away sheepishly as she opens the seal to her juice, placing her lips against the rim as she gently takes sip after sip. As we idle at the side of the hall, it doesn't take long for her. Let's both finish our drinks as the sun ever looms through the windows. 
Marking a makeshift signal that time has probably passed a little too much. Yeah, I don't see either of us having a problem with that. Engrossed in our own company, the two of us walk leisurely towards the doors, prolonging our time together as the club comes to an end. The experiment we were supposed to have done now at the back of our minds. The single clink of my can hitting the bottom of the trash bin, being the only sound calling out as the two of us bask in each other's company. No words needed as we happily make our way back down the corridor. Alright, <laughs> All right, slicing through the rays of sunlight, warm greets my skin with evening now settling in. Kyoko and I side by side making our way back to the labs to finish our day off. So yeah, I think I will end this part here. Uh, I know not much has happened, but hopefully next part there is more that actually happens because I mean the only thing that was really eventful was just seeing like Naomi's I guess true self as Jongin put it <laughs> that was the only eventful thing really and then afterwards well before and then afterwards not really much so hope you guys enjoyed um, in the top right corner of your screen there is going to be a link annotation or there's going to be an annotation on the top right of your screen to the next part of chemically bonded once it becomes available because i'm trying to bust these out consistently so hopefully you guys are enjoying these too um like i said i'm gonna keep going until i get at least one of the endings and then i'm probably going to commit myself to another like i guess game probably mo ninja girls because i have been playing that before chemically bonded but uh it's been a while since i got posted the last part so yeah we'll see so i'll probably just do like uh mo ninja girls after this and then like i think in between each episode or just when i feel like it We'll start going for like all the other endings that I didn't get anyway. So anyway, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.